Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video. I trust and hope that you're doing really fantastic this morning. And we're looking at this graphic here with the new area to watch. So that is off the southeastern coast. I had mentioned it in a previous update. And uh, here we have the National Hurricane Center now highlighting the area. So we'll be delving straight into what is going on. We've got that uh, area highlighted out in the main development region. And there's also Nigel, which is now a hurricane. So let's go on to the satellite imagery as per usual. Okay, so here we are kickstarting and we can see that there is some activity going on across some areas. So firstly, Hurricane Nigel is quite prominent out there. We also see some scattered showers and thunderstorms, all that convection out in parts of the main development region, some of which is in association with a tropical wave out there. So that one isn't marked for development, but as it makes its way continually to, uh, to the west by later this week, hopefully it is sustaining some activity to bring some well-needed showers and thunderstorms to bring a cool down for Eastern Islands. So I'll be watching that for you guys, but that next tropical wave should be emerging as we head to the middle of the week. That's the one we want to watch for development. We also see some activity off the east coast of the US, some scattered showers and thunderstorms across parts of the Caribbean. Let's zoom into the region here and we can see that there we've got it. Some scattered showers, thunderstorms here and there, especially down in the southwestern Caribbean and in the vicinity of Panama. So there's a lot going on down there and uh, that has actually been resulting in a lot of heavy rainfall, which may even be triggering flooding in some areas and so I hope that everyone being affected by this is doing okay. Also, some thunderstorm activity further up into other parts of Central America, such as uh, Mexico going to Guatemala, earlier in El Salvador. So uh, nothing too crazy is happening across the rest of the region, though things get very dry over in the Virgin Islands and the Lesser Antilles, where there is reduced rainfall. There has been reduced rainfall for some time now. So again, hopefully that tropical wave moves by and we can actually get some increased rainfall in here. And then as it relates to the rainfall forecast, this is coming from the Euro and this goes out to early tomorrow morning. We can see that throughout this time frame here, there's likely to be some substantial rainfall in some parts of Central and Northern South America. So this has been the trend that it uh, continues even now, but then across Northern Africa, Islands. There could be some afternoon showers and thunderstorms popping up across sections of the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos Islands, the Cayman Islands, Jamaica, Cuba, Haiti, the Dominican Republic, maybe even some spots in Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, and possibly over in parts of the Lesser Antilles as well. So this is just a forecast, which means it doesn't necessarily have to come to fruition, but it looks certainly possible that there could be some scattered showers or passing showers across some of these areas. But then as we head to the southeast, things get very dry. Most of the Windward Islands going down to Grenada, also for Barbados, Trinidad, Tobago, the ABC Islands, even down in the Guyanas, especially for South Guyana, there hasn't been much rainfall activity. And so uh, the rainfall is well needed from these future tropical waves. Let's go ahead and head out there. And firstly, we're taking a look at Hurricane Nigel. So here we have the hurricane on satellite. We can see it churning out there. It has been getting itself together and gradually intensifying. And so it is now a hurricane, a cat one, well to the northeast of the uh, Caribbean. So it's not a problem for the Caribbean right now. It is well offshore. And uh, going on to the cone forecast, here we can see that again, it is sustaining winds off 80 miles per hour, cat one status, and it is moving up to the northwest at 12 miles per hour. So the National Hurricane Center is now anticipating that this will rapidly intensify into a major hurricane, maybe peaking with winds of 120 miles per hour, which would be at cat three status. Cat four is uh, 129 miles per hour up to 155 miles per hour. So uh, even if it does become a cat four hurricane out there, it is not going to be close in proximity to land to actually bring any direct impacts. The concern will be the rough seas that it would kick up and that would make conditions a bit hazardous as it relates to marine activity. So it should remain well offshore of Bermuda and this contrasts what was initially expected and uh, this goes back to what I've mentioned in many updates that uh, we're bound to see changes with the, uh, the long-term track of these systems and that is what we've seen over the course of the past couple of days. This track shifted more and more to the east away from Bermuda so the worst of Nigel will stay offshore it is not expected to bring any direct impacts but of course I'll keep you posted on it
Now we want to go ahead and move on to that new area which has been marked. So this came up uh, last evening and we can see here that there was a 30% chance designated uh, for development. So a low pressure area will be forming within this general area as we head to later this week and it could try to acquire subtropical characteristics. So it's not a tropical uh, system. So it's not tropical in nature. So if it does develop, then it would likely become a subtropical depression or subtropical storm out there and so this might be a problem for southeastern states so if you're in florida georgia the carolinas even going up to virginia you want to watch this and uh, we'll be taking a look at what models have to show later in this video but then going on to this area marked in the main development region here we can see it so uh again there is no x the x shows the location of that low pressure area but it has not yet developed as i said that wave will be emerging as we head to the middle part of the week so there is a high chance of development yes but there is a 0% chance through the next two days, high chance for the next seven days, but uh, imminent formation is unlikely because that tropical wave has not yet emerged from the African coast. But once it does so, it is likely to move on that westward track and eventually we could see some development of it. And so with these two potential areas developing, then the next two names to be used for the season are Ophelia and Philippe. So we'll see if they will both acquire those names. And uh, now we want to go ahead and talk about what models have to show. So we're kickstarting things looking at the GFS and those black squiggly lines. They're called isobars and they join areas of equal pressure now this is as we head to the end of this week saturday the 23rd of the month and there we can see that gfs is showing some development of that low expected of the southeastern u.s and then there we have the tropical wave that low pressure area well to the west of the cabo verde islands now interestingly as we head to next friday gfs is not showing development it has been on and off i mean this is typical gfs it will show something now and then in another run or two it shows something completely different gfs has been changing a lot the canadian model is definitely showing some development of that system out there also that uh tropical wave we can see that it is getting itself together out there and uh, eventually we have the system making its way up to the northwest so canadian not expecting that it will be moving into the caribbean and then we've got the icon model by monday of next week showing that hey we'll definitely have a tropical storm out there there we see that next tropical wave emerging behind it then finally the uh, Euro model. Euro showing more of an elongated area out there in uh, off the southeastern U.S. coast, but definitely showing some development of that tropical wave to emerge off the African coast. And so, guys, there we can see that most models are consistent with development of that upcoming tropical wave, and uh, we can see some development of that system off the southeastern coast that is expected to form. So, I'll be keeping you posted as time goes by, and that is pretty much it for this update. And so, I hope you found it to be quite informative. But if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond once I get the chance to do so. And as always, remember to be otherwise.